Hello and welcome back and in this lesson we will understand how you can calculate equivalent capacitance of two or more capacitors when they are put in series or parallel. So let us consider two capacitors in series and assume that the two are initially uncharged. Now we'll go ahead and charge them by applying a potential difference using a battery that has voltage V and let us see what really happens when you start this process. So what will happen is that the upper plate of capacitor C1 will start losing electrons since this plate is connected to the positive terminal of the battery that would tend to pull electrons in its direction and the plate therefore ends up acquiring a certain positive charge say Q. Now, this positive charge Q will build up its own electric force between the plates and pull electrons onto the second plate due to the force of attraction and this will happen till the lower plate accumulates a similar charge Q1 but negative this time. But the question you should ask is where do these electrons come from? Well, it should be no surprise to you that these electrons have been sucked up from the upper plate of capacitor C2 and therefore it leaves an equivalent plus Q charge on this plate. Again, the plus Q charge on this plate induces a negative charge on the lower plate of capacitor 2 till a charge minus Q is reached on the lower plate. Now, this movement of charges will keep happening till the upper plate of C1 reaches the same potential as that of the positive terminal of the battery and the lower plate of C2 reaches the negative potential as that of the battery. So in a way the potential difference across this set now is the same as that of the battery. So what you see here is that the charge on each capacitor becomes the same if they are connected in series and to remember this very important point, just remember the term seri Q. That is, when capacitors are put in series, the Q value or charge is same across the capacitors, but the V value is different for each capacitor. The question now is, what is the equivalent value of a single capacitor that can replace this set of two capacitors? So if we apply the equation Q is equal to CV for capacitor 1, we can say that V1 is equal to Q upon C1 and for capacitor 2 we can write V2 is equal to Q upon C2. But we also know that the potential difference across the battery is nothing but the sum of potential difference across each of these two capacitors or V is equal to V1 plus V2 that is equal to Q upon C1 plus Q upon C2 or if we pull Q out this equals Q into 1 upon C1 plus 1 upon C2. But then going back to our question that is is there a capacitor that can replace the set of 2 what we say is that yes there is a capacitor with value C and the potential difference across such a capacitor would therefore be V then we can say that Q is equal to CV or V is equal to Q upon C then if you put this value on the left hand side what we find is Q upon C is equal to Q into 1 upon C1 plus 1 upon C2 or 1 upon C is equal to 1 upon C1 plus 1 upon C2. So we see the equivalent capacitor value is related to the two capacitors through this equation. And we can extend the same logic to n number of capacitors in series. That is 1 upon C is equal to 1 upon C1 plus 1 upon C2 plus 1 upon C3 and so on and so forth till you reach the nth capacitor and you write 1 upon Cn for that. And going by this formula, the value of equivalent capacitor C will always be less than the least value of the capacitors in series. As an example, if the two capacitors had value of 3 microfarad and 6 microfarad respectively, then the equivalent capacitor value C can be found as 1 upon C is equal to 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 6 
which equals 1 upon 2 or C is equal to 2 microfarad which is less than both 3 and 6 microfarad. So let us now understand how capacitors connected in parallel behave. So if you have a setup like this, what you can see is that the upper plates of both C1 and C2 are connected to the positive terminal of the battery that gives each plate the same positive potential or you could say that they are equipotential. Likewise, the lower plates are also at the same potential as that of the battery but this time negative equipotential. So you see in parallel each capacitor has a same potential difference but the charges Q1 and Q2 on the capacitors are not the same. So what happens is that the positive terminal of the battery draws different quantity of electrons from each of the upper plates of the capacitor such that the total charge Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2. Likewise on the lower plates an equivalent negative charge gets accumulated. In such a case where the potential difference across each capacitor is V, the equations we can write for each capacitor are Q1 is equal to C1V and Q2 is equal to C2V. But we also know that Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2. So Q is equal to C1V plus C2V. Now if we were to replace this setup with an equivalent capacitor C across the same battery, this capacitor will also have a potential difference V across the plates but charge Q. So we can say Q is equal to CV for the equivalent capacitor. Then what we can also say is that CV is equal to C1V plus C2V or C is equal to C1 plus C2. And extending the same logic, we can say that if there are n capacitors in parallel, the equivalent capacitance would be C is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3 till you get to the nth capacitor for which you'll write Cn. And needless to say, in parallel, the equivalent capacitor value is always larger than the largest capacitor in parallel. So let us now attempt a question that has a bunch of capacitors laid in parallel and series and across this network of capacitors we will apply a potential difference V. So the way we approach a problem that has more than one capacitor is to remember the fact that capacitors connected in series can be replaced by an equivalent single capacitor and likewise any number of capacitors in parallel can also be replaced by a single equivalent capacitor. So it is more a matter of establishing which ones are in series and which are in parallel. So let us look at this network and identify the set of capacitors in series and in parallel. Let us start from the left and pick capacitors 1 and 3. So the question is are they in series? Well a simple way of finding this is to say that the bottom plate of C3 is getting charged and this charge in turn causes charge on the upper plate of C3 but then charge on the upper plate of C3 is a result of electrons moving between this plate and these two plates. Well for capacitors in series this cannot happen. That is charge has to move from one plate to other single plate only. It cannot split in two directions. We can therefore say that these two capacitors are not in series. So when in doubt apply this test. Let us see if capacitors 1 and 2 are in parallel. Well you can see that the top plates of both C1 and C2 are wired together and have the same potential as A. Also the lower plates are also wired in a way that they both have potential B. So the potential difference between the plates of each capacitor is the same. Now remember that for capacitors in parallel the funny word to remember is par V. That is capacitors in parallel have same voltage and we see that the capacitor C1 and C2 have the same voltage or potential difference 
across the plates hence we conclude that they are in parallel with this knowledge let us quickly collapse this set to a single capacitor by taking the equivalent capacitor as c1 plus c2 and naming it c12 and it equals 12 plus 5.3 microfarad which equals 17.3 microfarad so let us make a simplified diagram of this setup and it would look like this now what we have done is replace this set with an equivalent capacitor of capacitance 17.3 microfarad now do these two guys look like they are in series well it is quite obvious they are in series but we will anyway confirm it using a proper reasoning and later on when you get practiced enough you will not have to use reasoning every time so here you can see that the charge that moves from top plate of capacitor 3 must entirely go to the bottom plate of capacitor c12 or there is no splitting of charge to another capacitor this indicates that the two are in series so let us find the equivalent capacitance and we name it as c123 and therefore 1 upon c123 should equal 1 upon c12 plus 1 upon c3 that is 1 by 17.3 plus 1 by 4.5 microfarads so c123 equals 3.57 microfarad okay now what we are told is that the value of v or the potential difference applied is 12.5 volts and we are asked to find what is the charge on c1 so to find charge on c1 and let us call it q1 we first find what is the total charge on c1 to 3 well that is simple and we get q1 to 3 is equal to c1 to 3 into v which is equal to 3.57 microfarad into 12.5 volts which equals 44.6 microcoulombs now we also know that c12 and c3 should have the same charge as that on equivalent capacitor c1 to 3 that is 44.6 microcoulombs and in fact that was the basis of finding the equivalent capacitance c1 to 3 next we go ahead and find the potential difference across c12 and that would be v12 is equal to q12 divided by c12 which equals 44.6 divided by 17.3 which equals 2.58 volts now in parallel we know that par v applies that is capacitors in parallel have the same potential difference or voltage hence we can say that c1 also has a potential difference of 2.58 volts and therefore the charge q1 on c1 is equal to c1 v1 which is equal to 12 into 2.58 which equals 31 microcoulombs well a good idea when solving problems in physics is to run a quick check on the answers you get so for problems around capacitors you can find out if answers make sense by seeing that if capacitors are connected in series then is the equivalent capacitance smaller than any of the individual capacitors and for capacitors connected in parallel the equivalent capacitor must be greater than any of the individual capacitances other two important things i'd like to remember when solving problems around capacitors in parallel in series are one par v or capacitors in parallel have same potential difference or voltage but different charges and two is seri q or capacitors in series have same charge but different potential difference or voltage v